councillors. We will reconvene the meeting. It is 124. So now what we will hear is the submission from the CE uh, presented by <laughs> Janine. <laughs> Approved. Um, so we're going to, for Ten consistency, minutes. we are going to allow 10 Stop minutes. Clock. We're going to allow 10 minutes for this. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite that smart. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Janine. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, um, councillors. So, um, yes, as part, I guess, of our long-term plan process as staff, um, between when you've approved the budget in February and now, we do monitor for um, changes that may be required to that, both in terms of feedback that we've had through um, the LTP development process, but also in response to changes within our operating environment. And so those matters are set out for you in this um, CE submission. Um, I note that normally we would try really hard, and we have tried really hard, to ensure that the CE submission is cost neutral, so that through this process we're not adding into um, the rates requirement that's been flagged through the draft LTP. However, through this one, obviously, we haven't been able to achieve that position um, and there are some increases in rates signalled um, in years one and two of the plan. Um, I think just to call out some of the key points within um, the document in terms of some of the organisation-wide changes. Um, so we have updated the inflationary impacts that sit behind the budgets um, to ensure that those are in line with um, the projections provided by Bill. Um, we had some slight variances there. We have taken the opportunity to go and seek updated forecasts in terms of our Treasury rates, so both from a working capital interest perspective, but also the interest rates associated with our borrowing programme, um, and that has seen a slightly net positive benefit for us. So interest incomes dropped, um, interest on borrowing has dropped by more. Um, we're flagged there in bullet point 10. Um, we are very recently in receipt of um, market uh, information in terms of staff remuneration. Um, while the draft LTP currently has a provision included in it for a 4.5% market and performance increase for staff, um, the market feedback is that the movement is actually an average of 5.1% um, just for market. The difference between those two is about $320,000. Now, we've noted it here for you, um, but we haven't made any assumptions around um, additional funding coming forward um, for that. That would be, um, we're in your hands um, on that matter. Um, moving into some of the changes in the groups of activities, just to note that a process, we've worked through a bit of a process to review drainage rates and reserves um, with a range of minor adjustments recommended in relation to um, those matters. Um, the Motukaraka water take consent, um, we have an attachment to the CE submission summarising the um, consultation that was undertaken with the local landowners on that matter um, with uh, the preferred option from that landing on option two, which is the transfer of um, the water take infrastructure and associated resource consent. So the financial impacts of, of that have been included within the numbers that are presented here. Um, we've picked up the uh, change in terms of the costs to deliver the IRIS Next Gen project, which is obviously being done in conjunction with um, a number of other regional council partners. Um, there are increased costs from the central program of this um, software development, um, and then there are changes within our own implementation costs as well. All of that is funded through a loan over 15 years, which means that the year-on-year um, rating impact of those increases is between that 3,000 and 33,000 per annum. Um, a, a, a number of uh, changes, just corrections, adjustments within um, the corporate area, particularly in relation to um, landlord costs across our properties um, and 
the work that we are doing to ensure that we have EV infrastructure available across all of our sites. Um, probably the more significant item within the submission is in response to regional transport connections. So I brought a couple of friends along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is the area that um, at the end of the day is, is driving um, the increase in rates revenue that we are seeing um, with an additional 2.4 million of net cost in year one requiring um, funding, um, primarily in relation to those fair pay and pay equity agreements for bus drivers. Um, the team have done work to try and mitigate that cost as far as possible by revisiting the low cost, low risk program. So a reduction there of $757,000. And then it's recommended that we also utilise some of the reserves that sit um, are held in relation to those um, services within Hamilton to um, offset that cost increase in year one in particular as well. Um, and then there are some further changes there noted in relation to Tahuia. Uh, in terms of capital expenditure, um, just noting there, um, and there's a little bit of cost reflected in the operating um, expenditure as well, um, our own compliance with the check clean dry requirements and um, management of the golden clam spread. So making sure that we are doing the right thing in relation to that pest. Um, and point 32 um, just calls out some changes to the infrastructure um, capital works program um, following a review of, of that. Um, finally, just from uh, point 36 and 37, we note there's some changes around uh, just our overall salary and FTE budget that was included um, in the draft. Probably the most significant of those is the introduction of a 12-month fixed-term um, enterprise data lead role um, following a review of our data management strategy, uh, so to try and uh, put some extra focus in that area. Um, but with that very quick walk through the submission, i um, happy to take any questions that councillors may have. Uh, Councillor Pierce. <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> Silent for a few days, I'd better say something. Existence. Um, thank you, Janine, for that, that report. Um, would it be possible for you to share the bill inflation projections with us? Uh, so through the chair, they were include they are um, included in some of the information that has come before you before. I can certainly recirculate um, what those numbers are. Um, so I don't have them off the top of my head. I but, didn't expect you would have. Um, but yeah, you're we can, saying they've been revised. So oh, see the revised figures. Yes. Yeah, so sorry, it's a, it was an error in our application of them in our in our draft budget rather than Bill having revised them. But we all. We can include that as an attachment to the deliberations report when that comes through. So you've got that information. Second point is just in relation to salaries. I noticed the survey is dated middle of March, which mm. might affect the actual adjustments which are currently taking place in the market, which I understand is quite significant, particularly in Wellington, which tends to drive the public service and I'm saying that I think they're probably overly cautious at the moment. But Anecdotally, I'm told that the salary bends in Wellington are likely to be adjusted down rather than up. So you just have to wait and see. But I'm, you're not asking for any increase there, so it's really not an, an issue. And the one that does concern me is public transport rating. That represents a sizable increase, particularly across the Hamilton rating base. Um, I noticed that you've managed to grab some money out of the current pool. I'd just like to encourage well on its team to, to go back to the drawing board and see what you can do with the rest of it. It's, um, that is a, a sizable increase that's going to be spread around the building port district. If, if I could just comment on a couple of those matters. So you're right, um, we, we rely on strategic pay for the latest information. That's the latest information we have yep. um, that we've in, included for the salaries. With respect to public transport, we've had a lot of debate about that and the use of the reserve. I've indicated I'm reluctant that all the reserve be used. It can pull down 
this year, coming year's uh, rate, but it will have a kick in year two when we no longer have reserve mm. to smooth anything. So that's something in the deliberations, I think, that will be important to discuss. Yeah, and I think the other thing um, is probably the ongoing review of that low cost, low risk, and the availability of NZTA funding to actually support anything in that in that programme. So I think we would expect to see further reductions in that programme due to the unavailability of funding, um, which we can try and reflect in terms of through deliberations to the extent that we have that information available from NZTA. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Yeah, I guess you've just probably covered my, my question around the public transport, and it was just whether that um, that 757 that you've found, so to speak, um, results in the loss of services. Oh, th through the okay. chair. Uh, yes, it, it does. It's identified um, in the low cost, low risk program as trials. Um, these were three um, trials that we'd identified uh, specific to Hamilton City. Uh, one was um, Peacocks was um, a part of it. Um, so these are future trials, just they, for my clarity. Yeah, they so are. So trials. the existing trials we haven't touched. Um, yep, okay. So we've just um, referenced what else is in that year one at this stage. Um, Again, noting Chris's point about yeah, years two, three, et cetera, moving forward. Um, yeah, I'll let you hear it. All right, I've got Councillor Strange and then Councillor Dunbar-Smith. We are um, tight on the, sorry, no, uh, okay. Uh, just noting our time is tight, so we'll be very quick. Councillor Dunbar-Smith. Yeah, just very briefly. So we've got 0 0.3 change looked at in the 24-25 year. Um, what are the key elements of that because that's only three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. So the um, impact is uh, numbers are in the report in terms of the total shift in revenue. It's about round, very round figures, three hundred and fifty sort of thousand dollars. So some are added again, some are adding out, but effectively, what are the main ones that lead to that point three? Um, so the public transport shifts have been um, a key okay. driver. Driver. And same again with the point eight the following year. Yeah. Um, I'd want to thank our um, submitters for presenting to us and uh, <laughs> congratulate them on, on a well prepared document. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more Was questions? Do you want to use your mic? The build is I don't believe the 10 minutes applies. So yeah, I'm just going to be silly. So anyway. Well, I, I, I am, I am, I am being judicious in it. Yeah. Uh, and if somebody else has another question, I'm happy to to allow I that guess scope. It's whether someone needs to be heard on record, otherwise we'll just well, ask them later. Yeah. Public, no, the public should hear us. Ask, yeah, no, that's questions. what I'm saying. The difference. Yeah. Councillor Nichol, nope. Councillor Smith, nope. All right, if there are no more questions, thank you very much for your submit. Thank you very much for your <laughs> submission. <laughs> thank you on behalf of him. <laughs> All right. Okay, Democracy. Dave, what ha else have we got to do today? One thing. One thing. We have a resolution on the screen to receive the report for the 2024-20. 34 long-term plan hearings, which of course includes all of the submissions, including those that have presented to us in person over the course of the last few days. And should we note that the uh, submissions will be considered at a later date during deliberations? Um, the agenda was very clear and <clears throat> excuse me, that this was a meeting specifically for hearings only, but if that would add a degree of comfort, we can Add that to the resolution. Happy to move that then. Happy, happy to second. 
All right, we have a mover and Councillor Smith and a, sorry. I just want to note, thank you, Dave, for sending through that email this morning with the, um, in particular, in relation to the Te Waka section, which I know was, there were bits cut off from it in the original document. And I just want to reassure anyone listening or mm. otherwise that we have received the, them in full and uh, we'll be reading more tonight. Great. Right. All right, we have a mover and Councillor Smith and a second in Councillor Nicol. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Yes. I just also pass on my personal thanks um, to Leah, who's mm. done an outstanding job. Uh, it's one of the best I've seen from an LTP and uh, and Dave adequately there, but um, <laughs> Dave <laughs> adequate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to take away from Leah because he, he told me that she did it all. I'm I'm happy to sit in the adequate camp. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank. <laughs> Speak yes. <laughs> Thank you to you all. Yes, well done, Leah. Thank you very much for your support during the last three days. And thank you, Dave. You are far more than adequate. <laughs> A spectacular bell ringing. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, we will declare our... Sorry? Oh, yes. Yes, let's close with a katakia. And, and just before we do, yeah, look, look, I want to thank all the staff. I want to thank the councillors. Actually, I think you've done a really uh, great job in asking questions. Um, and I just, uh, uh, yeah, that we, we've got a lot of work to do to come to the deliberations. And uh, yeah, the hard work will begin. Anyway, unahia, unahia, unahia mai te uru tapanui, ki watia, ki mama, ti nako, ti tinana, ti hinanaro, ite ara takatu, koirara erongo, efakaria, aki kironga. Kia tina, umie, huie, tai kie. Tai kie. All right, we will declare the meeting closed. Oh, sorry. You did yes. indicate that you were going to ask if there were any matters that the councillors wanted staff to work on. Oh. Um, mine have been satisfied at the moment. So, uh, I, Are there any other matters that councillors would like staff to compile additional information ahead of the deliberations? Um, I have questions, but I can just circulate them via email as well. So great. Don't need to list them now. Obviously, you know, people are ready to go. Sorry, obviously, we're going to hear from government on Tahuya in the next few days. So presume we have a paper come out to us on that. Um, I uh, will. Well, I'm sure that there will be communications when we hear something. Yes. And were we going to cover anything on Motokaraka today? It was it, it was we just treated it as a component of the submission oh, CE okay. submission. Thank you. Just didn't. Yeah. All just, right. Just finally, sorry. You know, I'd like to hear my voice. Um, can we have a bit of an outline of how the deliberations will go? Just for a councillor that has never been part of it, as as does the does the chair have an idea of the structure? Sorry, I guess is what I'm. Um, uh, the chair was trying to get through the last three days <laughs> at this point. Um, um, so hopefully I can assist with that. Um, what we are working on at the moment um, are reports in relation to each of the consultation topics that analyzes all of the submissions that have been received um, for and against um, key themes or comments that have been received through that, um, some analysis of that with a recommendation in terms of um, you know, on, on balance, given the feedback, what is the staff recommendation in terms of a decision for council on, on those matters? So that will just, the intent would be to work through just each of those consultation topics in turn. Um, and then we have a sort of a catch all for other feedback um, that has been received. Um, all of the requests for funding that have come up through the process as well in a response to that. So, um, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. So I've uh, so those numbers I've made sure are included in that deliberations report. So you understand that was the natural heritage. What does fifteen dollars mm, actually yeah. look like? Yeah. Um, what I will have available. So what I've got um, the team working on at the moment is effectively um, putting all of the CE submission changes. I've sort of assumed assumed um, at this point they will go in. So we've actually got from that a revised starting point for the budget 
just to make sure that I'm actually working with a clean set of numbers for deliberations. Um, through deliberations, I will be keeping track of the decisions that you make, the old running spreadsheet and the tally in terms of then what that means for the overall rating impacts. That will need to inform your resolution effectively at the end of end of that meeting around setting setting that budget. So, yeah, hopefully we'll have that. Well, nice just speak clarity on that. Uh, I, yes. Yeah, Noel can go first. Um, the, to, to Warren's point, the information you provide, will that be in like a spreadsheet um, summary for us of all the submission points and you'll recommend beside it, or is it going to be in a report like we so need to get? So it's a report. So each of them is a report to council. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Cookson? Um, Sorry, we're identifying each submitter number that, yeah. in terms of the, the support, you know, the options, the support, the not support. So you can actually refer that back to the information that you've had through these hearings. Councillor Cookson? As a new councillor, um, like similar to Warren, Warren was saying, not understanding what the process is next. But we did have some conversations around the table in the last two days, three days, that some of these organisations may need to be amalgamated. Where are we going to be with that sort of discussion? And is that going to be a part of it? Or are you going to, going to or, or because that wasn't just Tawaka, it was actually Surf Lifesaving was actually asking to be funded individually. We'll um, be working through that yeah, as that's part that's of our that, deliberation. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm, I'm wanting mm. to understand all that as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, so th those topics are all covered off, I think, in terms of Tawaka. Obviously, Council's funding has always been contingent on the agreeing a a an accountability framework and performance measures, that type of thing. So yeah. Karen's been working on that. With Surf Lifesaving, we have called out their request for an increase. Um, at the end of the day, I guess it's does Council actually support an increase in funding or not, knowing um, the, the size of that that ask um, at the moment, obviously that's done in one grant amount. So it's the how you know what's council's role in that? How would we administer it? Do we want to be making the calls? Um, but that that could, should come through the conversation at least from placeholders that we've got in there, noting those requests coming through from um, all of those organisations. I think it's a slightly bigger conversation than that though, because. What I heard yesterday is if we, that there is a possibility for tourism and Tawaka to be in. Oh, we can't, we can't, we can't make do that. that. Yeah. Oh. We, <laughs> what? What? And that it was possible to the table. So, so I didn't, the, I didn't, we didn't say that it could happen. They actually said it is a possibility. So why can't we discuss it? That's oh, that's why I want to I want to understand no, the process. side of the direct, LPP. though. We can't direct multiple uh, organisations. No, so. and I think that that is a conversation outside of the LTP process. Um, that that um, I'm sorry, I haven't seen Karen's um, performance measures in terms of what's proposed for Tawaka, but I think it is sort of trying to get a better handle on um, those arrangements to ensure that we've actually got a effective and efficient um, structures, players in that, in that space. But yeah, I think that's a decision slightly separate to the council's LTP conversation at this point in time. Yeah, just, rem just a reminder for councillors, we still are in this meeting. So this meeting is still open. Just just a reminder yeah, that we are all on, on the on record. This point is that yeah. if council perceives a certain direction, that we would like to see the organisations that could be under the umbrella of economic development. I would like to see that as part of the discussion and how that then influences the commentary along with the KPIs. It is a separate decision, but it's a very much related decision mm -hmm. and will likely influence my voting after what I've heard around the table and I want to know what those options are that we would like to see as part of the conditions of releasing money if we decide to support them, that they must consider within a time frame. So I don't want to preempt anything, but I just want to make sure that this doesn't get lost and in three years' time the same subject comes up. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, councillors. And I think that um, um, Janine will ensure that 
the deliberations report is a, a, reflects the consultation document and and whatever there may well be other discussion that you want during that process and that, that that's appropriate that at the happen. time but um yep. and ask when the papers for that are due out to us so in our reading uh, so they are being finalised by staff at the moment. I have been over the duration of this week reviewing as, as they come through. Chris will also need to have a look at those, but I think we'd be aiming for something early next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're early, eyeballing early, each other, I yeah, can feel it. Early, early, <laughs> next, early next week. I appreciate The agenda won't, I don't believe the agenda will be hefty. Um, because it is a summation of what you've heard yeah. um, and a recommendation based on that within the confines of what you've consulted on. Um, so, you know, each we report know a is, a, is a few pages. It's not like times and times of yeah. information, but, um, yeah, trying to sort of piece it all together to make sense of it will give you, you enough time to do that. Thank you. All right. With that... I'm now going to declare the meeting closed. <laughs> it is 1.50 p.m. Thank you, everyone.